My name is Paulus Kirchhoff. I'm the director of the Department of Cardiology at the University Heart and Vascular Center, UKB Hamburg, and a professor of cardiovascular medicine at the Institute of Cardiovascular Science at the University of Birmingham. And I will be speaking about the main results of the EAST AF4 trial, the early treatment of atrial fibrillation for stroke prevention trial. Now, the management of patients with atrial fibrillation has seen great progress in the last decade. Anticoagulation now prevents most strokes, and rate control renders many patients asymptomatic. Nonetheless, about 5% of patients with atrial fibrillation who are adequately managed, according to current guidelines, experience cardiovascular death, stroke, or unplanned hospitalizations for worsening of heart failure and acute coronary syndrome per year. And about half of these patients will be admitted to hospital over a five-year period. Now, these are unacceptably high rates of cardiovascular events. The early treatment of atrial fibrillation for stroke prevention, east af 4 trial, tested whether an early initiation of rhythm control therapy on top of current guideline required care can improve outcomes with inpatients with atrial fibrillation. The EAST AF4 trial is a prospective, randomized, open, blinded outcome, multi center international trial. Patients were randomized to a two treatment strategy, either usual care, which was following current guideline recommendations, or early rhythm control, which was the same guideline recommendation plus initiation of rhythm control therapy using antiarrhythmic drugs and or regulation and or cardioversion at the time of randomization. Now, there are different means to do that. One is we conducted the trial almost throughout Europe, in 11 European countries covering from the UK and Portugal to Poland, the entirety of Europe. Second, we defined broad inclusion criteria and strongly encouraged consecutive enrollment of all eligible patients. Thirdly, we aimed at enrolling patients with early AF, so patients who were just, who had just been diagnosed with it, with it. And the combination of these factors, we believe, led to inclusion of a broad at-risk population of patients with atrial fibrillation. The main finding is that early initiation of rhythm control therapy improved outcomes in patients with atrial fibrillation and risk factors. The hazard reduction was 21%, meaning that every fifth first primary outcome event approximately was prevented in patients randomized to early rhythm control therapy. This reduction was evident for cardiovascular death, stroke, hospitalization for worsening of heart failure, and hospitalization for acute coronary syndrome. Numerically, there were fewer events in each of the components of the first primary outcome. The trial really tested a strategy of early initiation of rhythm control therapy. The median time between the first diagnosis of atrial fibrillation and randomization was 36 days in both groups. The clinical benefit in reducing outcomes was obtained without increasing the nights spent in hospital, uh, which was 5.8 in the patients randomized to uh, uh, therapy and 5.1 in patients randomized to usual care, and without safety signals. The primary safety outcome, a composite of cardiovascular death, stroke, and predefined serious adverse events related to rhythm control therapy did not differ between the groups. It occurred in 223 patients randomized to one of the groups and 231 patients randomized to the other group. So in summary, early initiation of rhythm control therapy, as tested in the EAST trial, improves outcomes without increasing rights spent in hospital and in poor measure of cost, and without putting patients at risk. Clearly, our data show that early initiation of rhythm control therapy, on top of currently guideline recommended treatment, improves outcomes in patients with atrial fibrillation. I should also add that this clinical benefit was obtained without increasing the nights spent in hospital, which was our second primary outcome parameter, 
and without safety signals, the primary safety outcome occurred equally often in patients randomized to early rhythm control and Therefore, our conclusion is that early rhythm control therapy should be offered to all patients with recently diagnosed AF and stroke factors. Obviously, the process of including new evidence into existing guidelines is a complex process. And I think it is important that this is a multifaceted process. But we believe that the data of the East AF before trial send a strong message and encourage the uh, encourage new recommendations on the use of early rhythm control therapy in patients with atrial population on top of current recommendations for anticoagulation, rate control, and cardiovascular risk reduction. Every patient with newly diagnosed AF should be offered early initiation of rhythm control therapy on top of starting anticoagulation and on top of rate control and on top of measures to reduce cardiovascular risk, such as treatment of heart failure, hypertension, and prevention of coronary artery disease. 